Scott here, Scotty's Animals. We're going to do something a little bit different right now. Uh, we're going to have a little frequently asked question, question and answer session. Jim, one of my patrons, proposed that I do a video answering some uh, questions, uh, some frequently asked questions. I asked my patrons to uh, ask me any questions that they were wondering. And so I got a list of questions from my patrons. So um, let's jump into them. Um, but they are not about guinea pigs. They're about me. Um, and, and I guess some of them are guinea pig related but in, or animal related. But some of them are also just kind of a little bit more about me. Um, so if that's something that you're interested, stick around. These are all only for my patrons. Uh, so if you want to find out about Patreon and any of that stuff... Uh, check out my patreon site the link is in the description but Daniel asks me how did I get started with piggies so first question off is guinea pig related I've mentioned this before maybe in a live feed or in some other places I did a live uh, question uh, and answer thing a few weeks back but that was live so it's like hours and hours this is gonna be a lot more concise my third grade teacher had guinea pigs uh, and they really um, struck a chord with me, and so I had guinea pigs when I was younger. Okay, Patricia asks, do I ever relax and watch TV? No, <laughs> never relax. Always making, never watching. No, I love uh, watching TV, YouTube especially, and of course, you know, Netflix and that kind of thing. On YouTube, I, of course, watch some other guinea pig-related channels, but when I'm not uh, focusing on guinea pigs, I like to watch uh, various news, of course, rock-hounding videos, art-related videos. I like to use YouTube as a place to learn, so I was learning about archery and researching. I still haven't bought a bow yet, so I've watched a lot of archery videos uh, on YouTube recently. Um, of course, I watch Saturday Night Live sketches, um, but I've been learning about music production, so I watch YouTube videos uh, about that, about the software that I'm learning about. I've followed along with Bob Ross, <laughs> that's funny, right, in the background. So a lot of his episodes are on YouTube, and you can buy his paint set and, and you can buy the whole setup so that's something Jennifer asks maybe I've talked about this but wondering what I studied in college and what I've done since graduating and any advice I can give to uh, recent graduates to figure out their path well <clears throat> hopefully by the time you graduate college you at least know some of the things that you're passionate about and interested in you may not know exactly what profession exactly. I double majored in film and video and animation when I moved out to California. Um, yes, I could have ended up in the recording studio industry, in the music industry. I kind of got my foot in the door by volunteering uh, on, a, on an independent film and, and the work kind of expanded from there. So you know, you're going to have to volunteer and, and put in some time into it. I've worked as a professional visual effects artist for uh, a number of years. Um, but it's, it's really awesome to uh, be creating my own content instead of working on other people's projects, even if it's at a smaller scale. Um, so if you want to figure out your path, just follow your interests. Uh, follow curiosity. Always um, learn. You can you can never invest too much in your education, and it doesn't have to be, you know, actually going to school. And financially, YouTube is an amazing place where you can learn all sorts of things. Um, but the, the benefit of having some kind of an education or a degree, or, or or you're building a resume of experiences, and and these various experiences just say that you know you're can follow through with things so you don't have to have a traditional education if you can somehow develop relationships that can teach you the same thing but that's what education that's what formal education does is connect you with a community of um, 
like-minded individuals and you can get that even in a community college or wherever. Erica asks, what is the silver lining uh, of doing this that I never expected when I began? Uh, I would say the fostering of this community has been um, kind of unexpected. Uh, people coming together, you know, the same people offering advice and, and chiming in and, and we really becoming this big community and, and it's it's been really amazing. I mean, I could go on about that. Um, and the biggest laugh, I'll have to think about that one. I crack myself up sometimes with all the, the jokes and things, but every day people are astounding me with their wit and their comments and, and um, it has been a fun, hilarious back and forth. Well, thank you, Erica, for that <laughs> Thank you, Violet. It doesn't say Violet, but Erica goes by Violet. Meg asks, what kind of animal companions have I had besides piggies, birds, fish, and snails? And by the way, the fish, or the snails just kind of, they happen sometimes. They're just in the gravel and they just persist. Um, and if, uh, you know, your conditions are okay for them to thrive, there's not that many of them in there, but... Um, I neither care for them nor uh, try to eliminate them. They just happen to be. But I could never just flush them. That would be... Okay. Uh, pfft, what other pets have I had? Uh, I've had the hamsters and... Um, um, when I was younger, I had a rabbit. And... Um, I had a snake. A very small garter snake. Um, that's pretty much it. My family always had a, a dog of some kind. Growing up we had a schnauzer poodle and then when I went off to school to college my parents uh, had a um, like a collie sort of mix weird kind of dog and then um, now they have a, some kind of a, a shepherd and a, like an Australian shepherd with these big ears and, and some kind of a weird herding complex kind of, <laughs> okay, let's move on. Violet asked if I could give myself some advice when I was starting out, what would it be? Um, the advice would be just, you know, go for it. If you go for it from this place of, of, uh, I don't want to say this word authenticity, but I, I mean to say that if you just c come from a, a place of uh, uh, pure intention, then uh, um, you know your success may be measured in different ways. But uh, if you just if you just let it go, then and and then you are you know present when you're making your videos and. And the way you engage with people and comments and 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 if you're just thoughtful and it's all from the heart then um, I would just say just I would tell myself like I'm a ghost of Christmas future or whatever I would just say you know just trust that I would just say that it, it it will unfold in a way that will amaze and surprise and warm your heart and um, and it has um, the connections the uh, hopefully we're helping you know we're educating and we're changing lives and, and, and helping animals um, just do it whatever like and 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 it's it it is a catalyst for um, for love. Uh, it's about guinea pigs, but it's also about teaching people to care and communicating and uh, being grateful. Um, I have tattoos. Are there any more tattoos? Um, well, I have this one. It's a sunset. And I have this one, of course. And uh, 
I have a Celtic knot with some frogs in it on my leg, and I have another one that is like a scuba diving flag. Patricia was asking about the tattoos, and Cynthia was commenting on uh, tattoos. Um, but Jim now is asking uh, what got me interested in owning and caring for guinea pigs in the first place, and is there any one person who had the most influence? Um, well, as I mentioned, my third grade teacher uh, sort of introduced me to guinea pigs, I guess you could say. I'm not sure um, before that I even was aware of them. Was there any one person that influenced me the most in that regard, the regard of owning and caring for guinea pigs? Well, obviously Saskia. Um, she's taught me the most about guinea pig care um, and the time that I spent with her, of course, I've spent with the piggies, so um, the, the seven plus years that we've, you know, that she's been teaching me, um, but also about interacting with people and just having patience and just, you know, not jumping to conclusions and giving people the benefit of the doubt and, and, and just trying to be more graceful and, and patient with people. Uh, that is, you know, and it just a lot happens uh, in in that much time. So, you know, I owe her a lot as from you know not just about teaching me about guinea pigs, but also just about about growing up and about being patient and kind. So, I I'm running out of space. Uh, I've got a. a, a <laughs> got to erase some things off of my phone before I finish this last page. And Allison has a whopper right here. She says, do I believe in extraterrestrial life? And what do I think the best version of my life looks like? Do I have a favorite book? Okay, do I believe in extraterrestrials? Uh, of course, in the vastness of the universe, multiverse, whatever, there must be other uh, life forms. There must be, because it's just vast. Um, have they visited Earth? I don't know. Maybe. Um, the prospects of that are terrifying and also uh, fantastic. Allison asked me what the best version of my life looks like. And I think um, one thing that's important to me would be to be able to uh, be in control of the projects that I'm working on. Uh, from a creative standpoint rather than just always being a helper on someone else's project Allison asks do I have a favorite book uh, I'll list two books one would be Journeys Out of the Body by Robert Monroe and another one would be The Silent World by Jacques Cousteau okay um, Alina is asking what a normal weekday looks like for me and what do I appreciate the most um, at the moment um, well a normal weekday depends on whether or not I'm uh, doing a freelance work or if I'm just working on Scotty's animals I'm the most thankful for the health of my uh, pets my animals and my friends and family and just the well-being of my community um, so I uh, what would I change um, well I, I'm just hoping to be able to grow and to be able to do this more Scotty's animals um, in a greater capacity whether that's having my videos become better and also uh, have a, uh, a greater reach or a greater impact uh, on the animals in need and, and educating people and, and fostering the, the, the learning and, and the, the love and the care for small animals, um, all animals, and each other as well. Um, what do I dream of doing in the future? Uh, well, I dream of being able to do something like this really full time. Um, 
and and be able to uh, uh, thrive, have it grow, and be able to actualize uh, the ideas that that I have and that um, are suggested to me, and and to be able to. It's not this more, 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 grow, 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 but it's about following this kernel, fostering something that is growing and allowing this gen genuine curiosity and care to uh, blossom into what it needs to become. So that there is an element of growth, but it's an earnest growth rather than growth for the sake of growing. But if, if I could be able to focus more time and energy to this, that would be, that's what I want. Um, so that was some questions from Alina. Now we're on to the last page. Uh, Cheryl asks, do I believe in Jesus? And uh, she hopes, she says she hopes to meet me someday in heaven with the piggies. Let's not rush it, <laughs> Cheryl. Um, you can always come to the rescue uh, in Los Angeles. Um, do I believe in Jesus? I believe that, um, I believe that there is some kind of, uh, something is going on beyond this uh, physical reality. Uh, Science is starting to uncover some of the things that uh, a lot of the various religious teachings around the world throughout time have been trying to uh, explain. Um, and I believe that um, Jesus uh, was and still is a, a, a source of um, salvation and growth and knowledge and love uh, for many people um, but I don't believe in the exclusionary nature of um, organized religion um, so I think there are many guides and I think Jesus is one of them and I'm getting kind of tingly as I as I talk about this <laughs> um, but I, I also uh, deeply uh, think that the the fundamentals of uh yoga and and those teachings are also quite vital and, and true and then i think that um all religious teachings uh or or as you investigate those religious any religious teachings you will find um truth so uh it's not about exclusion it is about this sum of knowledge but you know it's not to say oh we we are all going on all these paths all at once um one of my piggies is coughing they like to sometimes drink too quickly it's okay so i listen um but i think we are drawn to our path and um So I'll say uh, um, I have much belief in belief in, and faith in Jesus and the power of Jesus to change lives. Um, okay, let's talk to Cyan. <laughs> Cyan asks, "What sort of music are you into?" And Cyan, she loves. This is I have two Cyans, so this is Cyan T. I have two patrons named Cyan. Is that interesting? Uh, Cyan loves the levelers and alternative folk music. Um, okay, what sort of music am I into? I all sorts from um, classical, jazz. You know, I grew up with rock and roll and uh, rap and hip hop. And, um, but before that, of course, classical music and I was exposed to a lot of folk or, you know, kids from the 80s listened to a lot of just guitar sing-along kind of songs when they were kids. So I learned all of those classic little kid songs, and a lot of those songs actually happened to be like Weaver's songs, you know, or uh, Pete Seeger, or, or you know, uh, there, there's this folk music 
basis in a lot of these kids songs uh, that I learned when I was a kid um, but I love uh, electronic music and I love uh, I mentioned classical uh, check out my record room I have a, a, a channel called Scotty's Record Room where I explore all the records that I've collected I have about 1200 records uh, I have a couple videos where I review some of my records, a bluegrass record and uh, some other records, uh, some classical and, and things like that. So check that out. But okay, I hope there's another cough. I'm going to check and see what these guys are doing. Who's coughing in here? You guys can probably tell just by the slight change in lighting that I had to finish this up the next day, today. Um, a lot of questions, which actually surprised me. And look, we got BB hanging out. BB's always friendlier in the AM. <laughs> okay, so I'm picking it back up. Um, Melissa wanted. Did I answer all the musical questions? Um, oh, yes, but Cyan also wanted to know, um, and I think I mentioned to her specifically. Uh, how to calm down a nervous piggy and my first question which I'm not sure if she got back to me yet would be is the piggy alone because a guinea pig that lives alone is going to definitely be more skittish especially if they're in a small enclosed cage so um, I would meet all the requirements that I've outlined in a lot of my care videos you doing um, which you know guinea pigs need a, a adequate minimum space they need a buddy and if you have them up on a table in an open cage like I do, or like we recommend at the rescue, then you'll find they engage and interact a lot more. Uh, and, and they put that fear aside and replace it with anticipation of veggies. That's really the key. If you always have them anticipating veggies, then they're more inclined to be reaching up and looking out rather than hiding. Um, Melissa wanted to know, what made me start adopting and fostering guinea pigs? Um, and what are my favorite pastimes in LA? Uh, well, as far as, as, as far as, um, what made me start volunteering, um, right, here's, here's more real talk. Um, I mentioned that I'm a visual effects artist and a free, a freelance artist. Uh, I worked on the movie Bedtime Stories, Adam Sandler movie with guinea pigs, and I got to work on the scenes where Bugsy, uh, the guinea pig, had chocolate on his head and marshmallows in his fur. And so it was a real guinea pig. We put the fake googly eyes on him and chocolate and marshmallow that was all computer generated. And I'm a compositor, so that's what I did was make it look like these 3D CG elements were actually part of the uh, scene. Um, and it wasn't just me, it was a whole team of really great artists that made it work. Um, and when I was working on it, I started thinking about my guinea pigs as a kid and how much I loved and missed them. So I did the, the thing that a lot of people do and I, I found myself in a Petco. And before I knew it, I had bonded with a pair of brothers who surely would get along when I took them home. Um, they ended up fighting after only a few months of living together and had to be side-by-side -side buddies. Um, and surprisingly, somehow, through the internet, I was still able to discover CNC cages and they did have adequate space and proper food and everything. But when one of them passed away, I thought, surely there's got to be some kind of a, a guinea pig rescue or something. Well, I bought the pigs uh, at the pet store up in the Bay Area. And, but when I moved back down here, um, I discovered the LA guinea pig rescue and I found, I found a, a bonded boy. I, I, I found a single boy that I bonded with, with my boy and they lived happily ever after for uh, a number of years. And ever since then, I've been helping out at the rescue, whether it's I started out transporting guinea pigs. Um, we used to have a relationship 
with vets in San Diego through We Companions. We now have a relationship with some vets up here that occasionally will um, donate their services or give us discounted neutering. Um, we don't recommend neutering, but every year or so we accumulate a few single boys that for whatever reason have repeatedly failed to bond with anybody and um, those boys are become candidates for being neutered and they usually uh, and well always we've had a very very high success rate they end up doing very well with uh, in the girls cage either with a, a girl or a group of girls so um, I used to help transport the piggies down to San Diego and they would get neutered and I would transport some of the ones that had already been neutered and healed back up. So back and forth, doing a lot of transporting. And then I just um, started volunteering on Saturdays during adoption days. Um, which gets me to, <laughs> let's see, Melissa asked me what my favorite pastimes in LA. Um, well, one of my favorite pastimes is scuba diving. I used to really do a lot more scuba diving on the weekends, which is about the same time as the rescue. But I love to do scuba diving whenever I can. I'm always down for a night dive at Redondo Beach. Um, it's amazing. You can see baby squid and stingray and all sorts of things, uh, especially at night when all the, the critters uh, in the day are asleep and, and the different critters come out. So it's, it's amazing. Um, but, you know, I'm just a, a regular dude. I spend a lot of time out in the desert going back and forth. Um, I'm in the middle of a long-term super adobe construction that is um, a certain uh, architecture style uh, where you take sandbags and sand and earth and you... Uh, make a, a simple structure. So I've been working on something like that for a little while. Um, and, uh, you know, that's the thing. I'm just so kind of, I don't, I don't know what you call it, but I, I, um, I don't totally just chill. I'm always doing something. I've always got something in the works. Um, that's something I've got to work on. Uh, I like to take breaks. But I'm always doing something. It's very rare that I have a full day off, you know, um, where it's just like nothing's been planned. Um, and, and if something like that is, then I go for a drive. Uh, you know, I live pretty close to the ocean at the moment, so I, my choices are north, south, and east. And uh, I'm always up for an adventure in any of those directions. So that's pretty much it. Um, but I love nature. So getting out, seeing a, a park, that's always great. Go, going and exploring, it's always awesome. Okay, and Maria from Sweden, she, um, I think she asked me what questions um, want to be asked for me. It's a interesting translation, but she's... <laughs> She's asking a more metaphysical, a metaphysical question of um, what questions should be asked. And you know what? This is the, the patron's opportunity to find out um, more. And, and this is your opportunity to ask in the questions, uh, in the comments. And, and I will uh, try to answer all those questions. So, okay. We're, we're getting to the end here. Um... Christina asks, what is my day job? And am I considering going full-time at the rescue if I could afford to? Also, she wants to know my favorite type of music. She's a rocker who loves blues, jazz, R&B, and classical. I do too. Man, she's also got what's your favorite movie? And besides the piggies and BB and the, the fish and the snails, what are, what are my hobbies? She makes soap. Uh, that's awesome. I, I've actually been interested in making soap. Um, it's all about, I guess, the molds and the ingredients and the scents and, and uh, the swirls. It sounds like fun. Um, what's my day job? So I've already talked about I'm a visual effects artist, uh, freelance work. It's great if, if you can get it. Um, but I love 
doing Scotty's Animals. Would I work full time at the rescue? I would like to work um, more time making videos and educating and BB, did you just poop? He did. Well, we'll get, we'll get that after this video. BB. How embarrassing. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so it's not that I would vol I would love to volunteer uh, more time at the rescue. I help with the YouTube channel. Sassy has pretty much got uh, the swing of things now, but in the earlier days. Um, I was doing a lot more. Um, I also do answer questions through Facebook and, and, and I'm still, the rescue is a place, but it's also, you know, Los Angeles is a very big city. So, um, we're all kind of spread out all the volunteers in such a way that we can, um, help out this large area. So I'm always fostering and going to shelters and, and doing things related to the rescue. Um, and I'd love to be there a little bit more, but, um, there's all, you know, there are only so many days that the guinea pig rescue is open and there is, uh, a staff, uh, of volunteers, but also, um, at the horse rescue side, there are people there that are feeding and taking care of the animals on a regular basis. And of course it's, that's where Saskia lives. That's her, her house. Um, so, um, I would love to overall spend more time doing whatever this all is and uh, making the videos and, uh, you know, the more time that I can focus on this, the more animals that I can help. Um, and that's it as I go trying to figure out the best way, as I mentioned sort of in a little thing, what is the best way that I can use my abilities to make the biggest impact and the biggest help and the greatest good? Um, always reevaluating that and asking myself that. Um, okay, well, what else did Christina ask? Music, I pretty much covered the music. Um, pretty much. I love jazz. I love blues. I love funk. Um, I went to school in Georgia and was exposed to a whole lot of music that I wasn't necessarily exposed to in Northern Virginia, Washington, D.C., where I grew up. Um, and of course, I went to school with people from all around the world, so that didn't hurt. Um, my other hobbies, uh, jewelry making and, and rock hounding uh, is one playing guitar, scuba diving, um, yeah. What else? Uh, and Christina says she could ask more, so ask away in the comments. Now here's Steph. Steph was wondering how long have I been rescuing animals um, and how old I am. Well, I'm 40, going to be 41 this year. I've been rescuing animals in some form or another, well, I was always very interested in animals as a kid and always turning up rocks and, and um, you know, if I found a mole in a window well, then I would want to keep it in a shoebox for the afternoon before letting it go. I would always let these animals go. Um, but I did have a turtle from the pond um, in a big tub for a few weeks and um, you know various <laughs> um, okay well Steph wants to know how long have I been rescuing animals and it really did start uh, up in Oakland I had a house when I lived up there with an insecure foundation or a crawl space the the screens were always getting ripped off and um, torn up and raccoons would would tear them off and then cats the stray cats would get in there and have kittens and so i'd be in my little office room and i would hear um meow little baby meow meow and and i and this would happen multiple times two or three times um and so i'd go down there and and there'd be a litter of kittens under there so i, I was able to catch all the kittens and get them 
spayed and neutered and then adopted. And then I started working with the Feral Feline Foundation in Oakland to trap the adults. They would get uh, spayed or neutered and then re-released with a little clip on their ear so that you would know that they've been spayed. Here, BB. This is, it's Jasper. Here. Um, so that's really what got it started. But that was really, you know, I was just doing it because there was a, a direct need under my house. <laughs> okay, let's wrap this thingy up. Um, what made me decide on guinea pigs? Um, nothing really. Um, as I mentioned before in this video about uh, having them as a kid and then working on bedtime stories and missing uh, my guinea pigs from childhood. Um, and once you get into the guinea pig world, I mean, they're so awesome and cute and funny um, and interesting that uh, they just, you know, and there's such a need. There's so many guinea pigs in need that are being dumped in shelters um, and, and living in a small apartment and also being a freelance artist. Sometimes I'm away for hours and guinea pigs, you know, they do fine when they're, when they have a, when they have a group. Uh, or, or a bonded buddy and they're in a, a, a place that they feel secure, they're fine without me for an afternoon. Not like the bird who, who needs me, who needs me. <laughs> um, he's like a little baby, like, or like a four-year-old maybe. Um, okay, what else has Steph said? Uh, she men mentioned me being a scuba diver. Um, yeah, I love scuba diving, but I'm not a I'm not a dive instructor. I'm just a rescue certified uh, diver. Okay, so and here's the last question, at least from the point in which I printed this out, and I don't mind doing another one, although you know this has gotten a lot longer than I expected it to be because whittling down. You know, I could chop all the ums and uhs out, but then you just end up, you know, and I have tried to whittle this thing down, but, you know, a lot of questions and, and, and just want to answer them. Okay. Leslie asks, who is the boss in the guinea pig pairs? And I think that that is a really awesome, funny question. It's a great question to end on. So let's go through. Let's go through our pairs. Well, as you know, Billy has been living alone, so he's the boss of himself. <laughs> um, Timmy and Mike, um, I'm not sure who I would say is uh, the boss there because, I mean, Mike is a very timid guy when he's around other piggies, but because of Timmy's mobility issues, sometimes Mike can sort of boss him around but not really and Mike's so sensitive because Mike's a crybaby himself that I think whenever Timmy whimpers he feels bad and he like stops pestering him usually he just sort of invades his space he's not really much of a humper uh, sometimes he kind of rumble struts a little bit but uh, that's why I put them together they used to be paired up with uh, different piggies um, moving on Gary and Pipsqueak are single at the moment, um, and Nails and uh, um, Piggy Smalls, they actually have kind of a nice, uh, even relationship, although I will say it seems like Piggy Smalls, um, Piggy Smalls is just, there's something about him. He's got this intelligence and this uh, empathy. Um, Sometimes, you know, you meet a lot of piggies, and then sometimes you meet a guinea pig, and you're like, geez, you know, boy, are you emoting like a person. <laughs> um, and he just has this, this uh, intelligence and this kind of, uh, some kind of a factor where, um, but he can't necessarily get the best of nails, because nails is so scrappy and, and tough. Um, they're so cute together. Um... And uh, who's, who's the boss of Nate and Snoop? 
that remains to be seen. They both are kind of um, on each other's... Uh, they're like at each other's throats. They're... they're uh, it's trouble in paradise. So, but Nate is at that age where he's just, you know, he's just becoming almost full grown. Um, so we'll keep an eye on them. Um, and who knows, maybe I'll be able to pair up some of my single boys in the future. Okay, well that's the end. I can't believe the BB sat on my shoulder for this whole time. Right? Uh, so thank you guys, um, or I should say you're welcome because that was a lot of hard work. No, but <laughs> thank you for, uh, just your interest in the fact that you'd even want to know these things. Um, it's kind of weird and I always wonder, um, where the line is, you know, cause, cause it's not about me. It's about the animals, although the channel is. Scotty's animals, so who is this Scotty guy? <laughs> and why does he have so many guinea pigs? Um, <laughs> well, maybe now um, you got a little bit more uh, of an understanding. Uh, so thanks for hanging in there. Um, there was a live video, so if this video wasn't long enough, there's a, a live Q&A video which actually disconnects after seven minutes and then it picks up in a video called Oops. <laughs> so uh, check those out if you can't get enough rambling and uh, dead space and me looking around wondering what's next. Okay, thanks guys. <laughs> uh, what a wild. This has been fun.